you're, I'd, I'd say I'd consider you probably a big pioneer of mocap performances. I mean, performances in general, it's kind of a, nobody really knows what goes into them, but what I'm fascinated by is everybody tells me how when they were acting opposite you, they really felt like they were talking to Caesar. It was never Andy Serkis in a suit, it was just Caesar. Um, when you do a movie like this, uh, do you have kind of any kind of input into kind of the look of Caesar, what he's looking like? Do you consult? Do you consult with the VFX artists or, or anything, or do you just kind of focus on your own thing? Well, it's. I mean, I, I obviously have, I saw uh, as yeah. Caesar progressed over the three sure. movies, I, I saw lots of concept artwork, yeah. and uh, you know, I, I was part of that process mm -hmm. in that in that respect. Um, so and. Um, but I, but in terms of the look on set and what the actors are looking at, yeah. of course, you know, I, the, the, um, it, it's just it's just technology at the end sure. of the day, and uh, yeah. you know the, the the different marker setups and so on have, have evolved and changed. But but um, but yeah, no, I mean it's it's all about it's just acting, you know. As far as I'm concerned, I just get into character and play the role. Since the last film, you've directed two films that yeah. are coming out, and uh, um, did you find that that helped you? That kind of uh, maybe make it easier for your co-stars to really believe that they're acting opposite Caesar, especially something like the Jungle Book, where it's all mostly mocap, right? Yeah. Um, did you find that that kind of informed you a little bit? Like, it was it was different, maybe a different approach than it was in the last two? Um, I don't think, I don't, no, I don't think it changed me as an actor um, directing so much. I mean, that's, uh, I kind of try and separate them, in, in mm -hmm. fact, you know, they're, they're, I mean, well, although having said that, what you do realize is that is that you're a storyteller both behind, you're, you're a storyteller as an actor, and you're a storyteller as a director. That's 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 your function, and and it's just a slightly different way, a different approach. And I love both aspects of it, but I don't think it necessarily affected me uh, per se. Caesar's so become kind of this mythic character as, as the movies has have unfolded. But from you, what's your perspective as a as because do you view you must assume him as a man, I guess, as a father type? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's that, I. The, the thing, the default kind of Caesar for me is is a, an empathetic leader, and a leader. Uh, when when I went from the early days of playing him as Rise and based him on a real chimpanzee mm -hmm. to Dawn, where I started to think about leaders that I would compare him to, I, I based him on Nelson Mandela yeah. and 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 um, you know and, and Obama to a certain extent. You know where 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 you see where you see someone who is leading not necessarily. Through force or, or authority, but through listening, and I, and, and I, and I wanted to, to, to very much um, to, to, that to be a central focus of Caesar. That he is a good listener. That he that he, he that he is able to be empathetic and and also listen to human beings. So he's not one that sees other in a way. Yeah. Um, until this moment at the at this cataclysmic moment at the beginning of the third movie, where he's pitched into he, he, because of his personal loss, he's pitched into a journey of revenge. What's it, what's your approach like? How is it different from something like in the MCU? You're playing a villain, but you're not using any mocap. You're just playing it as Andy Serkis. How is it different? How is it different acting in a mocap suit? What's the big challenge? Or is it different? There is no difference. Really? And there really is no difference. I mean, you're, you're playing a character. This one yeah. happens to be an ape, and apes are ninety seven percent genetically the same as us. But, but obviously there's a physical language mm -hmm. you know there's a physical language you have to learn but 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 in terms of acting really mm -hmm. embodying the character playing the role making decisions about the psychology the backstory the it's 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 exactly the same there's no you know, it's it, you're just being, you're just in, in embodying that that being, and 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 being playing it as honestly and truthfully for the other actor to to bounce off. Um, so I got to ask you, uh, compared to a lot of other stuff that you've done, this is kind of I imagine you're acting opposite people in these mocap uniforms. Did you find that uh, a bit of a challenge to kind of you know the regard that you're supposed to have with Caesar, seeing as how it's such a one-on-one -on -one type of thing where you kind of did you find that difficult, especially with the mocap performance aspect of it? Yeah, I mean, it takes some getting used to. Like, you're acting with someone who you're supposed to believe is an ape, and they got dots on their face and a mocap camera and the suit. And But it doesn't take very long that you just grow accustomed to it. And the acting is so good, and they're so ape-like. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Andy Serkis, one of the greatest actors alive, you know, you just buy it. He's an ape. <laughs> <laughs> He's a freaking eight, and, and and all of the actors, you know, the the training was rigorous for them. So they really do all their movements. You know, they're really conscientious and great. Getting into some character stuff, how do you think the colonel regards Caesar? Do you think he views him as kind of a freak of nature, or do you think that he's afraid of him and truly views him as an equal? What do you think is his take on somebody like Caesar? Because I thought that was interesting about the movie. I think he comes to respect Caesar, and uh, 
you know, he sees or goes from enemy number one to someone that he's fascinated by mm -hmm. because his level of intelligence and uh, the, the, you know, the fact that he cares so much about his uh, fellow apes and is willing to sacrifice for them. Um, yeah. Throughout your career, you've played a wide variety of roles. I know you're playing kind of a mentor figure in the Han Solo movie right now. But in this kind of time, you're, you're it's funny, I thought initially that you were the villain, but I don't know, would you say that the colonel even would see himself that way? I mean, I guess nobody no, sees No, the himself. colonel doesn't see himself as the villain. I've mm -hmm. never played a villain where I saw myself as the villain, no. even some evil characters. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, I think he sees that this is what needs to be done to save humanity. Do you think that there's kind of an overriding fear that he has amongst his people too in the, in the film? Like, do you think that that's it? It's not that they're angry so much at the apes, is that they're just terrified because they could see themselves disappearing? Yeah, I think that's a big part of it. They, they have to share his vision of what will happen if they don't uh, do what the colonel asks them to do. Did you find it hard to, to, to kind of keep the character from ever becoming two-dimensional? Because was, I was amazed at how three-dimensional he was and how kind of deep it was. It was more than just a play on kind of Colonel Kurtz, which I think maybe I assumed it might be wrongly. Uh, did you find it was a lot of work putting into that to make him a real human being, kind of? I think there's a nod to Kurtz, but I do think, uh, you know, a, that from the first conversation I had with Matt Reeves mm -hmm. is about humanizing the colonel. You know, I didn't want him to be a, just a straight black and white kind of evil yeah. character. So he was really open to that. So we did some stuff to make that. Were you a fan of the Planet of the Apes series beforehand, before seeing this? I was a big fan of this trilogy. You yes. know, the, the rise I was knocked out by, mm -hmm. couldn't wait to see the next, then Dawn, oh mm -hmm. my God, phenomenal. Can't wait to see the next. And then you know, get to be in the next one as a lucky life. So is it safe to say, I guess, for both of you that it was a unique experience working on a movie like this where it's <laughs> yeah, so everything is probably, I imagine, what, green? And then it's all added in later on? Oh, yeah, everything's fake, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing's just... I, I actually never left Kentucky. Well, really? I just phoned <laughs> it in. No, that's the misconception of the movie like this. It was... Whatever you saw, the, actually the only thing when I watch the movie, the only thing that I don't have incredible detailed memories of mm -hmm. shooting at were, um, was the avalanche. Okay. Obviously yeah. that's something that you have to create in post. Sure. But, but the prison. But everything else was the, real. If it, there's a river. We were next oh, okay. to the river. We were driving an hour and a half up into the mountains of, mm -hmm. of B.C. So uh, that's what blew me away. I always thought, oh, okay, I'm going to do this motion capture. It's going to be kind of weird, and we're going to be doing bizarre things. That, I... But it was really like doing a normal movie. Did you guys have a sense, though, of what the world looked like? Like, am I, I mean, you're on the, you're on the, um, on the horseback with, with all the other actors who I imagine mm -hmm. are in their mocap suits. Did you know what they were going to look like beforehand? Did they show you guys what they were supposed to? Yeah, I mean, I was, I had already watched Rise and Dawn, so sure. I had an idea of what they were going to look like and stuff, but I mean, just like seeing it, mm -hmm. like I just saw the, the final movie yesterday and it was, it's still like crazy. It was mind blowing. Really? And you're ape. I did not expect his ape to look like that. Yeah, were you shocked when you saw that for the first time? Oh yeah, it was, it was <laughs> such a, it's hard to explain. It was really a unique experience to see that for the first time. I was it, really moved by it. Because I mean, there's something about the eyes that it's weird. You, you don't look a thing like it, obviously, but there's something about the face where it's like, oh, you totally, on. <laughs> and the thing is, you know, you, you remember your performance. You remember the people, I, I have a vivid memory of that stuff. Yeah. Like I can loop really easily because sure. I, I, it's in my head somewhere, mm -hmm. some little, I go like, oh my God, I remember doing that. I remember I remember talking and the crackers falling out of my mouth and going, no, oh, no, you gotta go. No, no, oh, no, wow. no, 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 no. <laughs> and you watch it and you're like, yeah, that's exactly it. That's, that's uncanny. Yeah, it's crazy. Can I ask you something? Uh, did you find, because your character, Nova, can't speak anymore and has kind of fallen victim to this virus that's, that's eliminating mankind. Do you find, though, when you were playing the character, did you think of her as being afraid of Caesar or even seeing him as somewhat different than what she is? Like, does she have an idea of how this is different than what she is, different species? Like, do you think she's aware of all that? Yeah, I mean, I think that since 
he's going through so much like mm-hmm. anybody could sense that there's there's obviously something wrong mm-hmm. and just like the way like he looked it like just so like so serious and I think that I was I took it as very like intimidating and I think that I wanted to be like scared at first but I mean he warmed up to me Steve can I ask you uh, were you surprised when you saw your your toy for the first time the bad ape toy no. <laughs> I Flattered? Expe- yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, if I did, if I've done any movie where I, there's going to be some some toys, it'll be this one, right? Do you guys think you'll be back if there's another? Would you like to continue with the series? Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. I love working. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. Being able to pay your bills and stuff is sweet.